All right, so today we'll start with the STP as we have already discussed about VLAN and VTP trunking, DTP, intermill and communication, how we do. So the next sure. topic will be spanning tree protocol, yes. So we did the netting before. Uh, we covered net. We also covered uh, SNET or we didn't cover the SNET? SNET as in? Source net. Sorry? Source netting. And you said destination netting is not covered in this course. I remember that. Uh -huh. uh, but do we cover source netting or no? No, we don't cover. And also, the remember I asked you about the ACLs on the VLAN? Correct. So uh, that's not covered, I guess. Uh, that's not covered. Access VLAN you're talking about, is it? Access control list, like access remember control list for VLANs. Uh, no, no, it is not covered. Like uh, I, we spoke about one ticket where you know I mentioned like uh, customer is requesting the ACLs on the router for a VLAN, mm -hmm. uh, must be set to allow certain traffic like that. So that one and. Okay, so we'll start and then uh, we'll talk about the questions later. All right, all right. All right, so let's start with the spanning tree protocol. All right, so what is this uh, spanning tree protocol? As of now, we have seen in the switch that switch provides normally the redundant, you know, uh, switch extends your local area network. It, it expands local area network, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So normally we have seen three layers, access layer, distribution layer, and core layer. So, when we say the distribution layer, distribution layer will be connected to the access layer and access layer will be connected to the end devices, right? And distribution layer will also be connected to the core layer. Now, redundancy is very important in, in critical business, uh, you know, companies. So when in switch, in switch environment, when we keep the redundancy, for example, the question is what is loop? right so for example if i have two switch where is that if i have two switch between the switch if i have a connection your network is working fine but the question is if this network in, if this interface is down in that case the whole network will be down hmm. so to to achieve this what you will do actually you will keep one redundant link and that is where the loop happens. Loop happens as in, if I have one machine over here and one machine over here, in <coughs> this, if this machine is sending any ARP request, how the packet flow will be? This machine will send it to the switch, mm -hmm. which will ultimately broadcast mm -hmm. over here and over here. When this switch receives on this interface, it will broadcast on this particular LAN as well as back on this interface. Hmm. When this switch receives this message on this interface, it will again forward it, broadcast it here as well as here. Now when this switch receives here, receive here, it will send it here as well as here. So that information, this kind of information will keep on looping. Hmm. And since 
there is no mechanism here of TTL, right? Because they are switched. So there is no way to prevent the uh, loop. Even in, if it is layer three, maybe if it is router, in that case, we have TTL where the moment TTL becomes 250, uh, zero, right? And the packet will be dropped. But here, this is kind of layer two loop. And then information will keep on, you know, uh, looping here and there as well as end machines every time, every time end machines. Mm. That is called loop. Now it could be between two switches. It could be whenever you have the redundant link. For example, this is one switch and this is one switch and this is one switch. Mm. Till the time communication is happening like this, right? there is no loop but the moment you connect it here there will be a loop because it will receive kind of broadcast message on this interface and will keep on sending back and forth mm. right that's called loop so to prevent loop what we use is in switch we use spanning t protocol mm -hmm. right what it is actually it, it it's layer two protocol we, which prevents loop by selecting road bridge by selecting road bridge now what is road bridge so by selecting road bridge in a network in a layer 2 network so road bridge is nothing but you will assign a road bridge role to particular one switch mm. now how the road bridge is selected based on the lowest bridge ID based on the lowest bridge ID what is bridge ID now bridge ID is nothing but the combination of two things one is bridge priority so right so lowest bridge ID when we say and bridge ID is eight, eight bytes information actually. And this eight bytes will contain your bridge priority. So bridge priority will be normally two bytes. Right. And plus Mac address. So Mac is what is the length of the MAC address? Two bytes. What is the length of MAC address, Ketan? And plus. Mm, no, I don't remember. Six bytes. 48 bits, right? Right. All right. So this bridge priority will by default will be 32768 means every switch will have bridge priority as in 32768 this is the default priority so if i have two switches here right if i have two switches the default priority will be 32768 if i have three switches like this the default priority will be 32768 each switch so in that case when we say lowest bridge id so who will become lowest bridge ID? So the lowest bridge ID will become the switch which is having the lowest MAC address. I see. Because the priority is anyways type. Mm. Right. So mm. that switch will become the lowest bridge ID and lowest bridge ID will be considered as an root bridge. How come the MAC will reduce? You know, the lowest MAC address as in every switch will have MAC address, right? Mm. Whatever MAC address is the lowest in hexadecimal value. Okay. Right. Will become root bridge. So that is how actually the spanning T protocol sell, uh, selects root bridge and prevent the loop. Mm. Apart from that, when the root bridge is selected in switch network, right they will select they will actually you know choose the particular interface type 
so we have like all root bridge or the root bridge switch there are some type of interface or interface role so interface role as in the designated port let me clear it out or let me erase it right so we have like designated port as you see here on the screen so what is designated port a dp is one switch has been determined as having the best cost to the road bridge via its rp and it is marked as a forwarding port so the switch type one interface type will be or one interface role type will be root uh, your designated port designated port means where the traffic will be forwarded on that interface automatically and when we say the traffic will be forwarded automatically means like this designated uh, port will be the best port for the to reach the road bridge so let me just clear quickly clear it out and then we can make one diagram right so that all ports which we are which are best to the road bridge to reach the road bridge will will be called designated port or forwarding port this is these are also called forwarding ports so and root port root port is something rp is always a link directly connected to the road bridge so link directly connected to the road bridge which means if any switch is connected to the road bridge one of the port will become the root port on that port the part data will be forwarded and received so let me draw an topology here and then we'll discuss okay so let's say this is one switch and this switch is connected to another switch so we'll take four switches and make the diagram this switch is connected to another switch and this switch is connected to another switch right consider the mac address of this switch is we will say switch 1 right and this is switch 2 so we will consider this as in the mac address as well and this is switch 3 and stp is by default enabled on the whenever you have the redundant port stp will be by default enabled mm -hmm. and this is switch 4 okay all right let's say there are three connections between switch 1 and switch 2 mm -hmm. so there are three connections between switch 1 and switch 2 like this and there are three connections between switch 1 and switch 3 also there are three connections between switch 2 and switch 4 like this so you only need two connection for redundancy right why three i mean i'm just uh, putting it but yes we can have i mean in network we can have three connections so in case uh, 
in case because we have the advanced features using multiple links i can get the overall bandwidth in that kind of network we we normally have eight connections as well if you talk about the production and all all right so at this particular stage who is our road bridge based on the whatever we have discussed who should be the road bridge as i told you road bridge is the with the best bridge id and becomes central point of the network once road bridge is elected all others which have to make single path to road bridge so let's say switch one is the mac address switch two and switch three switch four these are the mac addresses of this switch in that which one will be the lowest one i see switch the lowest one. one is called switch one right right so this one will become road bridge because as i told you the priority will remain the same on all the switches 32768 by default mm. right so in that case what will happen now when it becomes road bridge this switch all ports will become designated port because a dp is what a dp is one switch has been determined as having the best cost to the road bridge since this one itself is the road bridge mm. right is the road bridge via its rp and it is marked uh, as an forwarding so all port of this will become road bridge uh, sorry designated port and let's say the port id is we haven't discussed here so let's say the port id is r f0 slash 1 2 3 means first port is 1 and the second is 2 and the third is 3 and this side as well f0 slash maybe 4 to 6 f0 slash 4 to 6 and in this switch same f0 slash 1 to 3 f0 slash 4 to 6 and here let's say f0 slash Four to six, four to six here, and F zero slash four to six, four to six, so one to three here. F zero slash one to three. Okay, so what I kind of not getting is root port is always the link directly connected to the root bridge. Root bridge is switch one. Sorry. So F zero one and three is connected mm -hmm. to root bridge, and F zero four and six is connected to root bridge mm -hmm. for switch two and switch three. So these two are the root ports F zero one two three and F zero four five six. All will not become root port. That's what. That's where it 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 is. Uh, I mean, there is a trick here, right? So let's say all port have become forwarding means DP, the designated port normally called DP. So all are become DP. You got it right. Now the question is which one? So now this particular switch. Let's say we are negotiation is happening between switch one and switch two. Right. So now switch to any of the port, any of these ports will not become DP. why because dp already is there so what is left root port and next is blocking but blocking. the explanation doesn't say anything about forwarding so what did you mention about forwarding forwarding as an designated port itself is called forwarding uh, right so when designated port means this particular port has got all the controls it can send and receive data as well as it can send and receive dpd but then which will be the root port here we'll discuss we'll discuss on discuss hold on right so because i want to discuss one by one now this particular switch you didn't ask this question how this uh, switch will become root bridge since it is happening automatically 
right so who i mean how this switch is selected as a root bridge and how other switches got to know that okay this particular switch has got the lowest you know mac address or the best mac address to so this switch switch should become a root bridge hmm. right right all right what happens switch switches communicate to each other using bridge protocol data unit that is something called bpdu hmm. right so this bpdu is sent by the switch in every 2 second on all the ports on all the ports may means on all dp ports hmm. right so this switch will send let's say bpdu on these ports when this switch receives that bpdu now what is bpdu bp in bpdu is it is kind of the communication right so in bpdu bridge protocol data unit they will have the uh, so many information as in what will be the bridge id so what is my bridge id in when switch one sends bpdu to this switch to in that bpdu will have what is the switch id of this switch one what is the priority of this switch one what is the port id of this switch one right what is the cost of that switch one all information will be there in the bpdu when switch two also sends bpdu to on this interfaces switch one and switch two let's say both have received the bpdus hmm. right now they will they both will check each other's bpdu since in bpdu bridge id all information is there mac address information is there so switch one will get to know okay i, I think i am the best in between switch one and switch two so i am the root bridge switch two will also consider saying that okay switch one it seems is having you know the best uh, uh, the candidate of the uh, to become root bridge so switch one is root bridge now switch two also agreed that for me who is root bridge switch one same way then when they they pass the bpd on this interface as well between switch 1 and switch 3 they will also switch 3 will also agree saying that okay switch 1 is the root bridge for us and switch 3 i am the non root bridge so i am connected to the root bridge because i am seeing directly packets right so at this point the root bridge selection ha- happened Now without the- without the opinion from switch 4 no so that way same way switch 2 and switch 4 will also negotiate and switch 3 and also uh, switch 4 will negotiate when switch 4 receives switch 1's bpdu through switch 2 and switch 3 switch 4 will agree that okay out of all switch 2 switch 3 and switch 1 and switch 4 switch 1 is having the best bridge id mm-hmm. they will switch 2 or switch 4 they will also actually exchange bpdu mm-hmm. right so in this when the when the selection happens switch 2 will say hey switch 4 you know what for me the root bridge is switch 1 mm-hmm. but and when switch 4 receives the switch 1's bridge id switch 4 will we will also agree okay fine that's true and in fact switch 1 is also root bridge for me because switch 1 is having the best mac address mm-hmm. right so is it is it is it is it okay to say <coughs> two or switch 3 will become the root port for switch 4 no this is not the best way to say what is the best way to say is now since root bridge all ports have become designated port right now we are talking between switch 1 and switch 2 right you see that the sequence of four conditions what is that four conditions how to select the designated port and how to select the root port the first as you see here lowest root bridge id that is for dp the one which is having the lowest root bridge id all port of that switch will become designated port that's what happened here this is the lowest bridge id all port have become designated port now let's come here they cannot become designated port these three ports cannot towards root bridge cannot become dp now so option is left either root port or blocking next lowest path cost to the root bridge hmm. right now the question is what is path cost 
total uh, the total of the the total of the how you call this i uh, bridge uh, the switch plus the port mm -hmm. so which are is the lowest mac mm -hmm. from point a to point b via even via something else another switch will be the the lowest sender cost so for example for switch 4 maybe switch 2 will be the lowest cost okay so the cost is by default fixed so if i have ethernet interface means 10 mbps speed the cost will be 100 okay if it is 100 mbps speed because fast ethernet normally will have 100 mbps speed mm -hmm. in that case the cost will be 19 and gigabit 1000 mbps speed they will have the cost as in 2 these cost actually values are the default same value okay since all the interface i am using here as in fast ethernet the cost will be 19 right so all of the three interfaces here the cost will be how much 19 right right so if i talk about switch one and switch two when switch two receives bpd we will say okay the cost of this interface is 19 the cost of this interface is 19 and the cost of this interface is 19 isn't it mm -hmm. one two three is the port id maybe now in that case it will say okay fine so now or since all in all interfaces cost is the same i will go for the next the lowest sender bridge id <clears throat> now who is the sender this switch one is the sender which is sending bpdu on this interface when switch to receives bpdu it will say okay this switch is the lowest but it is lowest on all three ports when it receives or inter bpdu on the first port second port and third port the bridge id will remain the same isn't it right so it says okay i am receiving all the same i mean um, bridge id on the all three interfaces so let's go for this the lowest sender port id now the lowest sender port id who is sender switch one right and when it switch when switch one sends on f0 slash one means wh what is the port id of the sender and the one which is the lowest mm. so f0 slash 1 f0 slash 2 f0 slash 3 okay. right so f0 slash 1 is what lowest yes so since this is lowest this port will be root port mm. this port i will consider as an root port so only this port on the switch one or is the same port on the switch two is also the root port? No, in switch one all ports have become designated port, right? Uh, okay, yes. So they cannot become anything now. Okay, so they, they are designated port just good for forwarding. Correct. So now a root port has, so in switch, to the root bridge the root port only will be one so since root port selected so these ports cannot become dp that these ports cannot become root ports so what they will become block blocking this one and the blocking means i will not send and receive any data on the blocking ports i will not send any bpd on the blocking ports but I will receive the BPD on the blocking ports only. Right? So tomorrow if this port is the down, for example, the root port is down, ultimately the switch will not receive any BPD on this interface. Mm. Right? So one of the port, well, one of the blocking port will become root port. Mm. Right? So if the same way selection happens between switch one and switch three, as I told you, switch one all ports but became uh, DP, switch three, uh, it, what is left is four, five, and, yes, four, five and six. 
So which one, which one will become uh, root pole based on the selection? Uh, so four. Four will become the root pole. So let's say four is this. So this will become root pole, and the remaining all ports will become blocking. Hmm. Right. Now let's talk about switch two and switch three between switch two, switch four, and switch three, switch four. Now, when switch four says the lowest root bridge ID, right? Again, the lowest bridge ID again from this way the bridge ID is the same, and from this way the bridge ID is the same, isn't it? It will check okay to reach my root bridge. Which one? Which path is the best for me? Right. So the lowest path cost nineteen here. And 19 here because that is again fast Ethernet, and the same with 19 here and 19 there. So total 38 from this path, 38 from this path. So all right. So Where it is going? Like what? What route are you considering? Switch four to two or four to one? The switch, route. Switch four to road bridge. To road bridge. Okay. Right. And then next is lowest sender bridge ID. All right. So when switch two sends bridge ID to the switch four, and when switch three sends bridge ID to the switch four, on bridge ID, which one is the lowest? Uh, one. No, between switch two, switch three, and switch four. So switch two, switch four to switch two is um, uh, number four, and switch four to switch three is number one. When switch two sends its own information BPDO bridge ID to the switch four, switch four will agree that okay, you have the lowest bridge ID from from me because I am switch four, you are switch two. When switch three sends BPDO to the switch four, switch four will say okay, between two and three, I am receiving BPDO bridge ID from two and three, and between two and three, switch two is having the lowest one. Hmm. Right. So now switch four will say, okay, I will choose switch four, switch to this path to reach my road bridge. Hmm. Why? Because I am receiving the lowest bridge ID from switch two. Hmm. Switch two will over switch will switch two send, will send on its own bridge ID, right? Switch three will send its own bridge ID. So switch two is the lowest, then switch three. All right. Now switch four has decided to go via this particular switch two. Now the selection of the designated port will be happening here between switch two and switch four. So since switch two is having the lowest bridge ID, right? Switch two is having the lowest bridge ID first one it will all ports will become dp all three ports will become dp hmm. what is next the next is in switch 4 i have to select which one will be the root port and which one will be the block port so, so this i did not get it why all three will become dp when on the previous one only one became the DP. That, no, no, no. Three became the DP, right? All three and three six became DP. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, right. So now, based on this criteria discussed, this particular sender port ID, switch two sender port ID for is the lowest one is F zero slash four. So this port will become root port, and the remaining will be. be blocking so all both both ports will become blocking now the selection between switch 3 and switch 4 happens switch 3 is having the lowest bridge id then switch 4 so all port will become of switch 3 as a designated port now when we talk about these three ports rp cannot be because rp is already selected dp cannot be because dp is already selected over here so what is left? Blocking. All three ports will be blocking. 
means if I have a host here, number of hosts wants to go to the particular outside or anywhere, the traffic will always go towards road bridge. So the traffic fill flow will be like this. If this host is sending any traffic, any packet, the packet will go to the switch four. Switch four is having, this is the road port. So switch four will send that packet using road port to the switch two. Switch two will use web zero slash one port to reach the road bridge. And from road bridge, maybe it has to, it, it has to send it to outside or uh, internally uh, distribute it. It depends, but road bridge will send it further. Right. And that is how the packet, packet flow will be happening. Mm -hmm. Right. That is how the root base selection happens. That is how the root port, designate port and blocking port selection happens. Mm -hmm. Any, any doubt from this? No. All right. There are some STP states. STP states. Where like disable, disable is when all ports, when the port is shut down, mm. right? When the port is shut down means administratively down, that port becomes disabled. Right. So obviously if that port is uh, administratively down there, there won't be any spanning tree running, mm. right? When you say no shutdown, immediately that port will be blocking. So switch will, will block that port so that it should not form any, uh, it should not form any uh, uh, loop. No shutdown will open the port, right? Yes, it will open the port, but just to determine whether it has to, it is, it is connected to the switch or the end device, what switch will do immediately. It will block the port. in blocking. What happens? No data can be transmitted, transmitted and received. No, no BPD will be sent, but only in this blocking port, the BPD will be received. So when, for example, when switch receives BPD on these three ports, in, in which is which is there in the blocking switch now determines that okay since I'm receiving BPD means the connected device is what switch isn't it hmm. so when I am receiving any BPD use so what I'll do all right I'll I'll move from blocking to listening so listening the port cannot send or receive data frames however the port is allowed to receive and send BPDUs. So it's, it's listening. Listening means, okay, I got to know that the connected device is switched because I'm receiving BPDU. So let me also send my BPDU to the switch. Mm. Right. So the switch will send and receive BPDU on that port. So after listening, it will go to the learning. In learning, the port, the port still cannot send and receive data frames, only can receive and send BPDU. So in this, they will learn, okay, your bridge ID is this, my bridge ID is this, and based on the BPD exchange, you are the root bridge for me. And I am the, uh, I am the non root, non root bridge for you. The cost is this much and you know, who should become your, your all port should become designated port. So based on the switch one will actually from, it will move from learning to forwarding mm -hmm. and we'll say, okay, I see that. Now these are the three ports or the, these are the six ports will for I'll, I'll put into the DP as in forwarding the port can send and receive data frame and send and receive the BPDUs both. Mm -hmm. Right. So once it is forwarding, the port is function. Now when, when, when switch to sees okay, road bridge, all the ports have become, you know, the DP. Now it's my turn. Let me select one of the port as in road port and block or rest of the port so that we should not form the BPDU. Mm. Now switch two will do the same thing. It will check, okay, root, uh, my one, uh, based on this criteria, what we have discussed, isn't it? Switch, uh, switch two will dis, uh, decide one port as a root port and the two ports will be blocked. And same thing switch three will also do. 
So that is how this particular states move from STP uh, disabled to blocking, blocking to listening and <coughs> to learning. They spend in this total overall from going to disable to the or blocking to the forwarding, they spend 30 second time. Mm -hmm. Means the delay will be for 30 second. Have you noticed when you connect to the switch, it will take some 30 or 32 or 52 seconds to forward the traffic. Mm. So after the after the trunking, when we do the resetting, it does take a few seconds. It does take few take few seconds, right? Because immediately you won't be able to send any traffic. Right. Right. So this is why it's because uh, switch actually goes through or STP goes to these states in listening they spend 15 seconds and in learning they spend 15 seconds 15 seconds 15 seconds total they spend 30 to 30 seconds to going from blocking to forwarding is it clear yeah all right next is stp timers as i told you stp timers hello time by default bpdus are sent in every two seconds two seconds perfect forward delay forward delay is the time interval that a switch port spends in both the listening and learning states the default value is 15 seconds mm -hmm. right so switch how many how many seconds it will extend uh, you know spend in listening and uh, learning stay 15 15 by default as i told you so that will become your forward delay maximum age the time interval that switch restores bpdu so for example this switch receives uh, bpdu from this port on this port it has received recently bpdu now it will Take, it will keep that BPDU for 20 seconds. That's why this stores BPDU before discarding it. The default max is. So before discarding and before removing this port, this switch to will keep that information for 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. Means if I don't receive the BPDU in next 20 seconds on this port, mm -hmm. I will consider Either this, this, either the switch is no more connected to this port, hmm. right? So if switch is not connected to this port, which means some, some end device is connected, maybe laptop or computer is connected. Hmm. So I will automatically forward this port from blocking to from blocking here. I will make it forwarding. Uh, this I didn't understand. Why would, why would that happen? Why it is blocking? It is blocking because the port is blocking and they are still receiving VPDUs on the blocking port. So receiving VPDU means it is they are making sure that the the connect the, on this particular port the connected device is switched. That is why I'm receiving VPDU first. And the second, my physical interface is okay. Hmm. Up. Right. Now if I don't receive any VPDU for 20 seconds. So what is the point of block this port when I'm not receiving any BPDU? Mm -hmm. Maybe here in this port it is switch and it is sending BPDU in every two seconds. Right. Right. What if I switch if I remove the switch and connect computer or laptop? Mm -hmm. Right. In that case, laptop will not send any BPDU. Right. Right, so this switch will still keep on this particular in blocking. If it is blocking this, you cannot access anything. So this switch will take this season after 20 seconds. Okay, you're not sending BPD, I'm not receiving BPD on this interface. So you are not the switch in that case. What you are is, might, might be the end devices. So I will immediately from after 20 seconds, I will make it from blocking to forwarding. Mm -hmm. So that's the max is time. Okay. All right. 
spanning tree port fast spanning tree appling fast spanning tree backbone fast rapid spanning tree we'll discuss about this all right so let me clear out clear this out spanning tree port for port fast this spanning tree port fast is something as we spoke a switch connected to the machine maybe a laptop when you connect to the switch it will take how long to forward the packet 30 second it will take around 32 second right now get after getting connected to the internet or after getting connected to the network waiting for 32 second is really a pain right you want to send that traffic immediately but you are still waiting okay port will port is coming up port is coming up port is coming up right so adding 30 30 second or 32 second delay is actually not bearable for the users that is where we have this port fast what port fast does is it 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 all it is always uh you know implemented on the access port we have discussed about the access port and trunk port right now this is access port so, so native, the, native uh, vlan no we have discussed the access port and the trunk port access port goes to the end devices and trunk port goes to the switch port right right so this port fast feature is enabled on the all access port right so what this port fast does actually it actually you know uh, skips all the listening learning state or immediately it goes to the forwarding state mm -hmm. because we have blocking we have uh, we disable blocking listening learning here right mm -hmm. so the port fast what it does actually it skips all these things and directly goes to the forwarding state means in just one second or immediately the moment you connect that port or interface to the switch the port will automatically come up right so this is called port fast spanning tree uplink fast this is a cisco feature where port does not have to wait again 50 seconds to come up it is implemented on trunk port so similar to the so if this port is connected to the another switch right so to come to come up this port it will take again how how long 50 second max right. power delay and all right so mm -hmm. uh, in order to bring this port as soon as possible i have a plink fast because now this port is a trunk trunk it's, it's because they are connected between switches isn't it mm -hmm. so that is uplink fast uh, backbone fast this is a this is also a cisco feature which is used to determine and quickly fix link failure on the local switch it should be implemented to all switches to allow for detection of indirect link failure mm. right so backbone fast is also uh, you know enabled on all the cisco switches where it should not receive any blocking it should not receive any loop mm. so that i can detect the indirect link failure if the indirect if the backbone fast is enabled on the switches right and anywhere if the indirect link failure happens i will i will i will detect that mm -hmm. right so these are the uh, spanning tree actually the implementations now stp actually there are three types of spanning tree protocol stp right the first is cst
and the second is PVST. And the third is PVST plus. PVST plus. So what is CST? These are the STP types. Common spanning tree. Mm -hmm. Whatever we have discussed so far about spanning tree protocol, we discussed about CST. Mm -hmm. Right? So in this diagram, if you remember, uh, in this diagram, for example, uh, uh, let's say this is switch 43 and this is your switch 1 and they have connection like this. The same example, same uh, diagram. They have connection like this and they have connection like this. Right, and this is switch two, in fact. This is switch four. So in this kind of network, actually, as we discussed, this will become root, root bridge, right? Switch four will send all traffic to the root bridge via switch two. All traffic will send via root switch two, mm -hmm. isn't it? Because the root, root bridge is, the, I mean, is, it is a root bridge for all VLANs. It's common spanning tree means this road bridge will be the common for all the VLANs. Okay. So what's happening in this particular scenario is this link, the connection to the, uh, you know, uh, from switch three, this link is completely idle. I am unable to utilize this path at all. Okay. Because all the traffic from your LAN, where it is going, it is going through. Right. Even if it is coming back, it will go through the same path, back same and forth. Path. Correct. So this particular particular path, I am unable to use, utilize. Right. So that is where we have per VLAN spanning tree, PVST. Per VLAN spanning tree. What it is actually, so per VLAN spanning tree is something work okay so per vlan spanning tree is something where i will have the spanning tree for each vlan right so are we using the particular pvst the load balance is possible so what in this case what i can do 50 percent traffic i can send it via switch two and 50 percent traffic i can switch, send it via switch three Mm -hmm. So I am utilizing this switch as well as this switch to forward all the land traffic. Even all those other criteria is not falling in part. Yes. yes. All those criteria will be following. Everything will, will be followed. But in PVST, I, if I have multiple number of VLANs, right? Mm -hmm. so in that case, I can make the root bridge for each VLAN. Mm -hmm. Right. So for example, if I have VLAN, from one to 10 means total 10 VLANs I have, mm. right? So I can say, instead of now switch one as in the root bridge, I can say, okay, switch two is the VLAN from one to five means root bridge is for VLAN one to five. Mm. Now switch two. So traffic from here, if I am sending between this particular VLANs, where I will send, I will send it to switch two. Mm -hmm. If I same thing say, that for switch three, the traffic between, between let's say six to 10 VLANs, I will send that traffic to switch, switch three. Mm. So all traffic will go between five to uh, six to 10 to the switch three, mm. right? And switch three will further forward it. Switch two will further forward it. Okay. So that is where we are utilizing actually this and doing the load balance. So utilizing all the paths. Mm -hmm. Now CST is open standard, right? CST is open standard, but, and PVST is the Cisco mm -hmm. implementation, okay. right? So since CST is open standard, it supports 802.1Q encapsulation. Is 802.1Q encapsulation, encapsulation we have discussed already, right? And PVST supports ISL encapsulation. 
trunking encapsulation right okay yeah trunking protocols we discussed dot mm -hmm. 1q and isl so cst yeah. supports 802.1 q and pvst supports isl so if, if if in one switch i am running cst if and if another switch i am running pvst in that case the communication will not be possible okay right so in order to make them communicate together i have pvst plus mm -hmm. which is again cisco proprietary and it will make the communication between cst and pvst okay right all right so let's take uh, five ten all right so so uh, we finished with the spanning tree protocol right any any point if you have any doubt on just you can discuss with me and then let's go for the uh, so, lab is there any uh, is there anything different for pvst and pvst plus yes yes, yes. pvst pvst is basically it only supports isl now mm -hmm. pvst uh, pvst plus it supports both isl and dot one two both right right but there is no more explanation to it or no more uh, it is, um, it is extension of PV, PVST itself. Though the function wise, everything will remain the same. But in PVST plus, it is like, you know, uh, the, the communication is possible between CST and the PVST. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's clear it out and let's go to the lab. <coughs> Hmm. All right, so let's let's take uh, two switches, uh, four switches, in fact. Connect all the ports between switch one, switch two, and switch three. So this F01, F02, F03 is automatically coming or you did, you have to set up something? No, this is in software, it is coming automatically. It is taking the first port. One of the display, the display here is coming automatic, right? Yeah, this is coming automatically. All right. So in this particular, let's uh, let's go to the switch one by one and see uh, which one is the road bridge and all and how we can change it. So command to check this particular is show spanning tree. As of now, I see here only one VLAN is created, that is VLAN 1 by default. We haven't created any uh, VLANs. But this information over here, this information is about the road bridge. Means, who is my road bridge select elected automatically is this, this particular information. So under the root ID means the road bridge ID information. So this is the MAC address of whoever is the road bridge in this out of switch, so uh, four switches. Uh, the MAC address of that particular road bridge is this. This is the priority. And total, these are the interfaces, right? And hello to seconds, max is 20 seconds and forward delay 15 seconds, which we have discussed already. This so this machine, out of the four switch, 
the machine automatically chose the root bridge right yes that uh, root bridge selection happens or okay. mm -hmm. now this is the its own bridge id its own information the local switch that okay my priority is 327689 and it is this is the mac address of my switch and the forward delay and uh, max age delay and the hello time 2 second so what time. is the what is the ad mac address that is uh, on under the root id Yeah, this is a MAC address. So, what is that MAC address for? MAC address of the switch. And then this MAC address is the second MAC address. This is the local switch. So, what is the difference? It is the same switch we are talking about, right? No, but this is the information about the root bridge. Whoever is the root bridge, that information. No, but okay, this switch became the root bridge, right? So, MAC address should be the same for both. i didn't say that this switch is the root bridge i said that whoever is this uh, root bridge this information is displaying of the uh, that root bridge okay so all the switches get populated with this information of the root bridge yes so that information yes all switches will be maintaining this information i see i see i see whoever the root bridge is all right so and as you see here uh, we have the ports as well 1 2 3 4 5 6 <laughs> so i believe since these all the ports are blocking right and mm -hmm. one port is becoming a root port so either switch 3 or switch 4 should become the root bridge either this one or this one as per this status over here what i see is this is the root bridge because i see all the three all six interfaces are green means all six interfaces are in forwarding designated okay. forward all this thing happen automatically yes. selection and all this yes show spanning tree and here we go it says that this bridge is the root local means this which is the root right and now you see this information and this information will same same, same. yes yes all the ports have become designated port as i right. told you this is the cost 19 since it is cost ethernet interface the cost will be 19 by default Uh, fast internet right and what is p2p point to point means directly connected point to point <coughs> and this is the port priority 128 by default hmm. all right so this which has become the road bridge for all now if i under this show run i see here is spanning tree mode is pvst nowadays nowadays no switch will be the uh, the cst actually or the common spanning tree protocol is kind of now is gone because this is very old implementation right is of the disadvantages and all we do not mm. use in fact in the software as well so by default it will be pvst mm. right for wheel and spanning tree mm. now what we can do is since we have discussed this uh, in different way right so we'll make it this as in top so that and this is in the bottom like this mm -hmm. right so now this is our by default root bridge isn't it mm -hmm. so assume that here over here we have some lan connection this is your lan connection and i have some machines over here mm -hmm. right now i want to implement here the pvst for vlan spanning tree so to implement pvst first of all we have to create the vlans so before creating the vlans let's make sure that the vtp is working fine so that i should so interfaces trunk as of now no interface is the trunk so mm. we have to make those interfaces in trunk isn't it mm. so i'll go interface range fast ethernet 0/1 through 6 and i'll say switch port mode trunk and moreover we'll configure the host name as well with switch i am at here so i'll say host name switch 1 
or oh, this is H1. I configured all the ports, all the interfaces in trunk. We'll go to this as well, switch. And we'll change the host name to switch to and interface range fast ethernet zero slash one two six and switch port mode trunk so they all are trunk same thing i will do it on switch three host name switch three interface range fast ethernet zero slash one Two six and switch for more time. We'll go to switch four here. And host name switch four and interface range fast to connect with a slash one two six and switch for mode five. All right. So our for VTP, our first requirement is done. All the interfaces are trunk now. Now what I'll do is I'll configure this as a server maybe, right? So VTP, I'll set the domain name anyway. So VTP domain, let's say champ is the domain and VTP password you can configure, let's say Cisco. So, on the other switches to enable the VTP, show VTP status. Rest of the switches, I will make them as a client VTP and mode client and VTP password Cisco. So, do you it is because of lab that you are doing this, or also in the real environment? You in the real do? environment as well, we do the same thing. So, if it if it is selecting the, the other criteria is automatically why it doesn't select the client or the server and client also automatically no this we are setting it up for the vtp vtp is not by default enabled right so we have to set it up right to to avail that vtp feature okay so vtp password and then VTP. does the switch need to be in layer two switch or layer three switch it for vtp it could be layer three as well any any of those right two or three yes yes all right let's create some vlan maybe from vlan from uh vlan 1 to 10 or 2 to 10 i believe the range command it is not taking so vlan 2 vlan 3 vlan 4 vlan 5 6 so created the VLANs. I should see all these VLANs on switch four as well. Show VLAN. And no, I don't see it. Show VLAN brief. Show VTP. Let's troubleshoot it. Show VTP status. All right. VLAN number of existing champ. The VTP domain name is fine. Let's go and check it here. Do show VLAN. I see it's, it's received here on the other switch. Do show VTP password is Cisco. Do show VTP status and champ. So I just replicated. Now let's see this switch. Do show VTP status and this switch also seems to be fine to show vlan vlan brief i have the vlans oh, let me check all right all vlans no here i am not receiving any any of the vlans 
All right, the Y because show interfaces trunk. All right, trunk are there uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. All the interfaces are trunk. But show VLAN brief. I am not receiving any of the VLANs. Show VTP status. VTP domain name charm, which is by default there already set. Do show VTP password. Let me verify. Ah. VTP password is not configured. So we'll say VTP password and Cisco. Now show VLAN. All the VLANs came. All right. So here everything is working fine. Right? Mm -hmm. Now your all the traffic is going towards particular switch one. It is going through this. Now we will implement. It's uh, not showing the VLAN on one switch, right? It is showing on all the switches now. So from VLAN one to five, right? I'll make this switch as in road bridge. Okay. And for VLAN six to 10, I will make this switch as in road bridge. But the road bridge is already there, no? Road bridge is already there, but the same concept as if you remember, as of now, everything, all the traffic is going via this way and this link okay. is not utilized. Okay, okay, so we are doing VTP. Okay, okay, okay. So now I am implementing here the PVST. PVST. So right. PVST is already implemented, right? Configured, but using the PVST now, I am actually making this switch as a road bridge for a few VLANs and this switch is the road bridge for a few VLANs. Okay. And the other main main road bridge remains the road bridge, right? No, in that case, it will not be the road bridge. Okay. So what I'll do is the command to make it spanning tree, VLAN, and from VLAN one to five. Hmm. I have this command. If you do question mark here, I have root and priority. You can also set the priority for this. Maybe I'll, I want to set the priority. By default, what is the priority? Three two seven six eight. Six, uh, three two seven six eight. So I'll say uh, the priority is starting from zero to six to sixty one thousand four forty forty. I'll say for this particular VLAN, root uh, priority zero means the lowest priority, right? So mm -hmm. this will become the road bridge. Mm -hmm. And I'll go here and say spanning tree VLAN from six to ten, right? And priority is zero means for six to 10 priority zero and one to five priority zero on this. So if I check here, show spanning tree, let's say VLAN two. VLAN two, as you see here, this is not the road bridge and the priority of this is two here because VLAN two and moreover road port. But if I say switch port VLAN six, it will say this is the root bridge. So VLAN 7, this which is the root bridge. VLAN 8, this is the root bridge. Right? Mm -hmm. But for VLAN 1 to 5, maybe anything, this is not the root bridge. Mm -hmm. Same thing, I can go here and say do show or show spanning tree VLAN one so for vlan this is the root bridge but for vlan six this is not the root bridge right hmm. so that way i mean now this is acting as in the primary for uh, this vlan this and this is acting acting primary for this vlan hmm. and the traffic is if half of the user wants to you uh, wants to reach there, so they will utilize this. If half the half of the users they want to go to this VLAN, they will utilize this. Mm. Right. So that is how we implement uh, PVST. Okay. 
clear yeah no right they will not ask question on the cst on the exam no 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 they will not ask anyways we have discussed about cst only right most of the things we discussed about cst hmm. but anyway yes they they won't be asking any question from cst all right next topic next topic is ether channel hmm. so ether channel is something which is required to bundle the links all right you refer this diagram right Mm -hmm. before this implementation what should be happening is few of the ports between this switch and this switch right one port will become root port and the rest two ports will become block port so basically in one one protocol it will be redundancy in other protocol it will be redundancy plus bandwidth yes you can say that now what we have seen is one port in this will become root port and the two two of the port will become blocking isn't it hmm. so all the time so let's say this is root port here and uh, the two ports are blocking so all the time the traffic will be utilized this port will be utilized one port will be utilized uh, right correct all the traffic which is going from here or every time only root port will be utilized and your traffic will be sent hmm. now just like pvst in pvst what we did is we, we made both the switches as in the primary for the different different vlans right but hmm. still these two interfaces we are unable to use it even though but the traffic will always go through the root port these hmm. blocking ports we won't be able to utilize it right as in it so now to utilize this blocking port as well we have ether channel concept what happens actually it will work with the spanning tree protocol itself but what it does actually it bundles these three interfaces into one particular interface as a in logical so logically it bundles all three interfaces into one and now after bundling it will have speed as in 300 speed as of now it has how much 100 mbps 100 mbps and 100 mbps right now so increase the bandwidth it correct. increase the bandwidth right correct so after bundling bundling this all three interfaces to one logical it will get 300 speed okay so my question is in such yeah. channel and lscp yes now now are the lscp will come no 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 are these protocol only for switch or they are also for router normally they are they are for the switch okay but the routers which is having the ethernet modules can also support the uh, lscp okay maybe higher end platform higher end routers where we have switch we can insert the switch blade and all there uh, yes we can have the lacp and all mm. right so that is what the ether channel it does it it creates the bundle between two switches and adds those links into that particular bundle logically mm. right so what we'll do here is we will create a bundle between switch 3 and switch 4 but before that ether channel it is a mechanism which allows us to use all the links as one bundle connected to another switch instead of using one link which is in forwarding state there are two protocols for uh, ethernet ether channel protocols port aggregation protocol which is called pagp and the link aggregation protocol which is called lacp hmm. right port aggregation protocol pagp is a cisco proprietary right mm -hmm. and the lacp is open standard mm -hmm. in the in the port aggregation protocol we have the modes modes are des desirable auto and on mm -hmm. 
so desirable auto and on it is it is like if and at one particular end if it is desirable and if others other particular switch if it is desirable or or, or passive anything the ether channel link will bundle but if it is passive here and passive there as well right so ether channel will not bundle mm -hmm. similar similarly in open standard if i have active and active the this ether channel will bundle but if i have passive passive it will not it will not but if i have active and passive it will become ethernet channel okay right so these are the differences between lacp and pagp lacp is open standard and the pagp is uh, cisco proprietary where these are the modes available and these are some modes available in the lacp normally we use in the, in the industries we use lacp right so to actually bundle this now let's go through the lab So what I'll do is probably you can bundle between switch one or switch two or switch three. So I'll go under interface range and I see it is F0 slash one, two, three. So range fast ethernet zero slash one, two, three. And here I will say channel. Maybe okay. Channel group, and you have to assign the number. So I'll say channel group one, and then it will ask mode. Mode is basically based on the mode itself. It will select which protocol it is. So if I say active or you know uh, passive, so this is LACP. But if I say auto or desirable, this will be PAGP, isn't it? Uh, active passive will be LSCP. Active okay, desirable will become PAGP. So if I say here the more desirable, right? Switch will automatically take this particular as in the LAC, uh, PAGP protocol. Hmm. Let me go to the switch. This switch as well. And the connectivity is the same. However, there is a protocol called Cisco Discovery Protocol (CDP). Hmm. Right? What is this protocol about? This is a Cisco actually proprietary protocol, and what it does, it discovers all Cisco connected devices hmm. by sending CDP packet in every sixty second. Hold down is one eighty second. Mm -hmm. Right. So when this switch is all the interfaces are up of this switch, it will send a CDP packet. Mm -hmm. It will send a CDP packet in every 60 second to this particular device because by initially when this switch comes up, it doesn't know who is connected to me. Mm -hmm. So it will discover it by, by sending CDP packet. Mm -hmm. And since this is also Cisco device, it will also discover using by sending CDP packet. Now they both will exchange CDP packet and that CDP packet. What model is, is this switch is what all are the local interfaces? What is the remote model and what is the out uh, this particular remote uh, local road remote interfaces? All information will be there in the CDP. Hmm. So in fact, if I want to check this out, For uh, here, like show CDP, right? Neighbors, who all are the CDP neighbors? As you see here, I have Switch Two connected to me, as well as Switch Three connected to me. Now Switch Two is connected to one, two, three port, and the remote remote device is thirty nine fifty, and also it is connected to F zero slash one two three. Right. So this basically CDP discovers that information automatically. Right, so let's go here and say 
show IP interface brief. As of now, we haven't created the bundle. So interface means past Ethernet zero slash one through three and channel group one. It should be the same channel group, whatever we have used in the remote switch. I, I am missing this part. What is happening here? We are creating the ether channel bundle. Okay. Right. So this is the command to create the ether channel bundle. In PHGP, right? Using the PHGP. Yes, because mode we have configured they are desirable and here auto or desirable, whatever. So it will automatically take PHGP. Okay. Right. We can verify and as, as you see here, we have also got the log saying port channel change state to up. So show, show IP interface brief port, port channel. As you see here, this is the port channel and in this port channel, all the actually all the interfaces are up status is up means the port channel is working fine. Command to verify is show ether channel summary. When you say show ether channel summary, these are the codes actually. The, the, the different different ports, right? D means down, B means it port channel. So as of now, if you see here, port channel is one and the, these are the codes SU. S means the capital S, capital S means layer two means this is layer two and capital U capital U means in use. So layer two in use mm -hmm. protocol is PAGP mm -hmm. and these are the three interfaces, the part of bundle one, two, three mm -hmm. and P P means port in channel. Mm -hmm. so this interface is port in channel. This port, this interface is port in channel and this interface right. is port in channel. Right. Show interface port channel uh, maybe this inter this command is not available uh, show ether channel port channel one and here as well i don't have this show interface in third channel well, that command is not available otherwise I would have shown you third. Third. All right. So anyways, now this particular, since I have this show IP interface, if I do show IP interface and the brief, I see that this particular port channel is in bundle. Mm. Right. So now between this, there is a logical port now port channel, which is actually combining all, all three interface, uh, you know, bandwidth and making it, making it as, as one. Now this ether channel is also used for the load balancing. So don't, don't get confused that load balancing means if I, if this switch, if this switch has got, you know, four packet to send, then uh, it is like first packet will be sent on this first second packet will be sent on this and third packet will be sent on this nothing like that what it does actually the load balance is always based on the deterministic fashion the deterministic fashion means based on the source IP and destination IP based on the source IP and destination IP This is the actually load balancing mechanism of the ether channel, which is by default source IP and destination IP it will send. So it will never be basically the deterministic, uh, you know, sorry, the load balance based on the per packet basis, but it will be based on if this is the source and this destination, maybe the first link which will, will be utilized. 
if source A and source destination B is there, then this link will be utilized. Like this, this is this is called load balancing here. So how this is surprising to see. Uh, IP IP is used uh, in layer two yes. for determining something. Correct, correct. This is surprising, but since this is algorithm, right? Ether channel is kind of the algorithm. So when it receives that particular IP, it will it will it is it is sending on it is sending on the you know uh, it is sending on the layer two port. Hmm. But based on this, we have ether channel layer three as well. This is layer two cha ether channel. Okay. Right. This is layer two ether channel. We have layer three ether channel as well, where mm -hmm. you have to configure IP address on the port uh, channel group, mm -hmm. which is not there in the CCN. It is, it is there in the CCN. Right. So that is how it works for ether channel to form the bundle. There are some prerequisite prerequisite as in fast trunk means the trunking should be enabled between two switches clear mm -hmm. second the interface type if one interface is fast ethernet the other all three interfaces should be fast ethernet it should not be where this is fast ethernet this is gigabit ethernet uh, and this is 10 gigabit ethernet mm -hmm. so interface type should be same i see right and right. and third is what all vlans it is carrying on the interfaces by default let's say one interface on the trunk link it will carry carry all the vlans from one to one through four thousand ninety four mm -hmm. right so all mm -hmm. interfaces in that case should be carrying the same number of vlans mm -hmm. if if Maybe if you have filtered the VLANs and said maybe 10 VLAN, let's say you blocked or one to 10 VLANs you have blocked here, when on, but on both the interfaces, other two interfaces, all the VLANs are allowed, ether channel will not come up. I see. So these are the three kind of the prerequisites ether channel to form. Mm. Same way we can also configure the LACP. Mm. You just have to change maybe between switch two and switch one, we can make it the rest of the ports. So I'll say interface range and four zero slash four two six and channel group two and mode active. We'll go to switch one and say in the interface uh, range first Ethernet zero slash one two three and channel group two and mode maybe passive or anything. So show ether channel summary. Now you see here the port, the protocol is LACP, right? And mm -hmm. this whole port channel also has come. As of now, you see here capital I. The capital I means standalone as of now. But I see here now the port channel two has come up, so mm -hmm. it should be now PP. P as in port in channel. Mm -hmm. LACP SU means layer two in use, mm -hmm. right? Channel group two. So that is how we configure the ether channel and that's what it's all about the theory. Mm -hmm. But yes, industry point of view, yes, they use spanning tree, they use uh, ether channel widely. I see. Any question out of this? Uh, no, no, not, not, from the, not from the session. Mm -hmm. But I had a couple of questions from the from the word doc that I wanted to uh, rehash, but it's already twenty five. Um, let me ask maybe one or two, and then we can carry on. Sure. 